talking about National Opt-Out Day, an online campaign encouraging flyers to tie up TSA agents by opting for a pat-down instead of the machine. James Babb is the co-founder behind one of the sites, WeWon'tFly.com. He's at the Philadelphia International Airport this morning. James, thanks for joining us. Good morning. So tell me, what's your plan for the airport this morning? Well, we're going to be educating travelers about the dangers they may find inside the airport. In Philadelphia here, it's at Terminal F. Passengers may be exposed to at the radiation strip search, or they may opt out of that and go for the enhanced pat-down, which under any other circumstance might be considered sexual assault. So for weeks, we've been encouraging travelers to avoid the airport altogether. For those that must fly, we ask to consider opting out of the scan. It's mm -hmm. going to be better for your health, and it might put them in a position where they must accommodate the travelers who refuse to be abused. Okay, we're going to get into those issues in a little bit. I just wondered, how many people do you have with you? Uh, well, uh, there's people all over the country at different airports today. Uh, our demonstration here in Philadelphia will be later this evening. And how many people will be at the demonstration? Uh, that's a good question. I expect a very good crowd, um, probably somewhere between 50 to 150 demonstrators will arrive to help us educate the travelers. You know, USA Today had this, um, had this poll out, and they say that 71% of frequent flyers don't mind these pat-downs at all. Uh, they say it's necessary for security. In fact, a lot of polls that you look, look at um, say people say better safe than sorry. So. I guess my question is, why go to all this trouble when a minority of people feel the way you do? Well, the newest poll from Zogby says 61% are opposed to the scanners and the enhanced pat-downs. Those that find out about the detail of the scan, that they can determine if a man is circumcised or not, or if a woman is menstruating, are appalled. Once someone has seen or experienced the enhanced pat-down, the thought of them putting their hands between legs pressing against genitals, feeling around breasts, hands between buttocks. It's just outrageous to almost everyone. So the TSA is trying to address your concerns. It says it's going to look at the policy. It's already moderated some things. What more do you want? I want everyone to be able to travel with dignity. We are human beings. We are innocent until proven guilty. We have the inherent right to be secure in our persons. I think a lot of people, continue to I think fight. James, a lot of people under understand those concerns. But when you look at somebody like the underwear bomber, what do you do? I mean, how do you keep the flying public safe if there's no intrusion in privacy? Well, what we're talking about right now is is not about security. We're talking about security theater. The experts pretty much agree that what they're doing here is completely ineffective. I understand the manufacturers of both the millimeter wave and x-ray machines say they probably wouldn't have caught the underwear bomber or the shoe bomber. The creator of the TSA himself, the man, the congressman from Florida who helped write the bill that made the TSA, is calling it a big kabuki dance. Well, the TSA, These techniques have the been TSA tried. though, those people who are in charge of safety are not saying that. Well, of course, they say obey, obey. We know what's best for you, obey. Well, the American people are smarter than that. So what if by not doing a pack down, you know, something happened? Somebody got on a plane who shouldn't have gotten on because security wasn't quite up to speed. I mean, what's the answer? Well, I want us to have the best security possible. That means we have to abandon the security theater and we have to bring in common sense. What they're doing right now is for show, it's actually creating a false sense of security. It could make passengers less vigilant because they see these high-tech gadgets and invasive pat-downs. The passengers have been our best line of defense. They're the ones that stop the underwear bomber, the shoe bomber, the 9-11 attack over Pennsylvania. That's our best line of defense. So we need to let them know, let everyone know that what they're doing right now is not making anyone safer. So once we can get rid of the fake security, we can actually make our airports and air travel much safer. I, I guess my last question is if you do cause big delays at Philadelphia's airport, I mean, do you worry about a backlash? Uh, won't people be angry that you're slowing things down, keeping them from their families on Thanksgiving? 
Well, that's not our goal. That's why for weeks we've been telling people to avoid air travel altogether. For those that are uh, accept, uh, willing to accept the radiation scan, hopefully that line will be wide open. But for those that don't want to be irradiated, uh, get there a little bit early. So uh, if you have to get the enhanced pat down and the TSA keeps their, their heels dug in, there'll be a little bit of extra time to go through that. Just, just a word on the radiation. The FDA says the risk is very, very small. It says a scan produces about the same radiation you'd get in just 42 minutes of walking around. So most experts say this is not dangerous because you don't walk through it every day and you don't stay in that full body scan thing for a long period of time. Well, there's, there are experts that say this is acceptable. There are experts that say it's not acceptable. I think that's a choice that the individual should make and it should not be imposed upon us. Cancer survivors, pregnant women, and other people have a sensitivity to radiation. They're not being warned about it. So that's one of the things we're doing here is to let people know what the dangers are so they can make their own informed choice. All right, James Babb, uh, good luck to you today. We'll see what happens. Thanks for.